So just, just, just by way of introduction, um, if you'd just like to do a moment about yourself around you and video, where you and video stick together. We've already heard from Jeff and Chiria, obviously, already. So. Yeah, so my name's Michael, and I'm one of the co-founders. I'm one of the co-founders for Showreel, which is a video dating app that just launched uh, uh, late last year. And we're a video app that's, uh, we kind of we came to the market a little differently. I think a lot of people want to go towards video because it's the future. We kind of saw it as something different. I think, uh, you know, what you're seeing a lot of dating apps today and with photo, photo-based content is it's fake. A lot of people are filtering their photos. They're going on dates and you're meeting people that don't look like their photos. And I think we kind of wanted to focus more on how could we create a dating app that allowed people to meet real people, kind of see their personality, hear what they sound like, and just get to know them just from seeing a video. So for us, when we were kind of coming up with the concept for Showreel, and we called it Showreel because we wanted people to show their real, their real self. So it's, uh, it's, it's an app that's not just shooting a video of yourself, it's actually helping the user want to generate the video content. So I think, I think what, when, you, when you think about video, one of the big issues is will users make videos of themselves? I think you see a lot of times on social media, people are very uh, good on video, but when you actually have to create a video where someone that you're romantically interested in is going to look at it, people are kind of apprehensive. So when we were coming up with the concept for Showreel, we thought, how can we have an app that allows you to see the real person, but also encourage people to want to make a video of themselves? So we, we kind of came up with this concept of creating short clips and you know, basically asking short questions and making it easy for them to do video. So I think, I think when people think about dating and video, they think it's a natural marriage together. But in reality, it's kind of hard because you're, you're putting your real self out there. And when you're doing that from a side where people are going to judge you romantically, people, people get really nervous about it. So that's kind of why we came up with the whole concept. Jeff, you were talking a lot about mobile, uh, uh, mobile and video were key elements of your, your presentation earlier. How do you think the, the users are developing their appetite for mobile? Is it a, a case of you, know, you see some of the engagement numbers and it looks quite high, but actually how much time am I spending watching the video? What's the ultimate video length, if you like? Sure, so you know, as I mentioned before, in these pretty early days for us, um, we're seeing a typical, uh, the, the, the average session was about, uh, about a minute, minute and a half for the app before video. Um, and, uh, but users came about 10 times a day. So, so users are spending all together 10 to 15 minutes a day. What we're seeing among people who watch the video is that they spend 20 minutes watching video. So the, of the 250,000 plus people we have watching video, the average is 20 minutes. And people, of course, watch for, for, for a very long time. And the average broadcast length is 40 minutes. Um, so, you know, but, but I echo um, what was said. Um, this is actually our, our third foray into video. And the first was basically Shot Roulette meets, meets Casual Gaming back in 2008 or 9. Um, the second was Charm, which was a, an iOS app which we had big plans for in 2013. Um, it was basically Tinder meets Vine. So short looping videos um, with a swipe. I thought it was pretty interesting, but nobody, nobody you know, it, it came down to the issue of um, it's awkward to a lot of people do feel awkward creating a video. Not everybody is. Not everybody. I think maybe this will change, but not, not everybody is a video producer naturally. Um, and then, the, if you make people who aren't video producers produce video, it comes out awkward, and then nobody wants to watch them, right? So, so that that's kind of what we learned from Charm. Um, our current video product is basically one-to-many live video, um, and what we see is only two and a half to five percent of the daily users broadcast. Um, but 20 plus percent view. Um, and so we, we, we want viewing to be the mainstream activity. The people who will broadcast will broadcast. And that's, that's kind of the logic behind it. Sharia, how, how important is, you know, we're talking about the mechanisms of, of, of getting a user in front of an audience. How important is authenticity to this? You know, we could, at the one end, you could actually get it a, a really slick production done, but actually, does the shaky, the shaky hands on the camera not very well scripted, does that actually come across better? 
It's interesting because you can be authentic and, and also the polished component, right? Because you can have great video where you're really raw, but it, how clean is that footage? And I have a wide range, so I've done all the on, on this, the video platform, so Periscope both for brands. Um, we do a lot of takeovers with influencers, and of course, you would trade off that shaky hand for being in a room that thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of our audience would be interested in. So they'll, they're willing to give up some of the sleekness sometimes for the quality and the uniqueness and the sort of insider feeling of the experience. Absolutely. And Jeff, what are, what are the challenges you know, everyone's facing is around you know, monetization? You know, whether you're, a, a, you're charging a monthly subscription or pay as you play or whatever the model is, how do, how do we find video perhaps interrupting some of the commercial messaging that we're trying to get in front of our users as well? Is it dis distracting our users away from perhaps some advertisers or some other functionality that we're trying to sell into? Um, so I think you know, we're still figuring out the monetization angle. Um, the way we typically launch a new product is to launch it unmonetized, establish a baseline, um, get it to a point where you know, the, the growth is kind of steady but not necessarily uh, you know, torrent and so that we don't kind of break the growth with, with over monetizing it. Um, the way this video solution that I'm talking about has been monetized around the world is with this tipping model where um, users who are watching can tip the broadcaster with an online gift um, and the broadcaster can cash out a portion of that tip uh, of that gift value. Um, so we view it as that's essentially the low-hanging monetization fruit in the sense that it's well-defined, it's been done before, um, and we think it, it fits well with the product. Um, kind of after that, there's things like what Facebook is exploring with ad breaks where you could imagine the broadcaster triggering an advertisement and saying, hey, um, please watch this while I pay the bills or while I go use the rest of whatever it is. Um, and, and you know, participating in a portion of the, the revenue um, with the broadcaster on the ad side. Um, you could also imagine pre-roll coming before streams, although I think we're trying to avoid um, that. Yeah, and I think um, what we saw in the Facebook slide um, is really good. Is a lot of apps, you don't really want to push advertising directly at the customer. You don't want them to feel that the advertising being forced on them. So, one, one example that we did is um, because we asked the user questions and then they answer them, the question actually runs in a pre-roll before our videos. So we have sponsorships that actually sponsor questions on the app. So we're always trying to find different ways of advertising within the app without making it look like you're directly advertising. And when we're, I mean, there's an awful lot of press at the moment around moderation in social media more broadly anyway. Are we making it harder by making video much easier? Is it much harder for us? Because we've, we've probably got to sit down and watch the video from end to end. Yeah, we, um, so we actually use, um, I have a funny story about moderation, because we, we actually use a circle video on our app. And um, we, we have a lot of users that, you know, we ask them specific question and answer. One, we have a question, uh, what's your hidden talent? So you think that could actually be quite, <laughs> quite uh, risky. Um, but we had this one um, um, woman who recorded it, and we have a moderation team that goes through our videos, and they were looking through, and she was fully nude in the back-end video, which is square. And then we thought, oh, we have to get on the app and remove that. And we went on, and it was cut off perfectly, because the user didn't realize that they were being shown fully. But um, I think video definitely is, uh, is a little harder for moderation, because you know, we could go through a lot of our content. If we don't actually finish the full video, then you might miss something where there could be nudity or some violence or something that you need to moderate. So it does pose a challenge compared to photos. Sure, where, where, where does the, the challenge for the business come in that actually I might have to go back to the user and say, you know, this isn't quite right. Is it, is it up to us as a brand to do some quality control, because actually if our users are putting up rubbish videos, then potentially our users are going to disappear. Absolutely. There definitely is a cost there, so I think the trade-off is worth it to have, to be more concerned with maybe ruffling a few feathers to have that heavier moderation versus the reverse to have footage out that doesn't reflect what you're trying to communicate, because it only does take one of those one kind of rogue moments, and your competitor is very excited to see that, to sort of 
um, change the dynamic or the expectation. And how, how do you, I guess there's also a risk of, I'm almost bearing my soul by doing a video. How do you then control some of the negatives that might come through the platform where users are, are perhaps not offering such complimentary messages as you might want? Absolutely. I think that's where we lean into the human component of the business. Say, like, hey, we, we want, we're moving fast. We won't always get it right. And I also would encourage, I definitely see from the media standpoint, um, within our company at time, the, the definitely the heavier investment in video. So it makes much more opportunity for, from a content standpoint, ways to partner, fun things to do. I've hosted a few uh, online uh, sh series for our brands and also have collaborated with advertisers. So we're seeing that where advertisers spend a lot more money just on sort of creative video. I launched a new series this year called Love Lab, and our launch partner was um, Netflix, and so they had their new showman data out, so they worked with us, they did the whole um, studio setup for the series for the first few episodes, and so sometimes, you know, accessing budget and looking for monetization opportunities that might not be necessarily what we originally think of, but are great opportunities to sort of see it, especially for this real-time experience. Every time we get to see real people moving is, is great for the business. I don't all necessarily want to hear about from me. Has anyone got any questions for the panel before I go on? Please. Uh, I think everybody will understand the, the, the model when the girl uh, making broadcast and the guys are looking at her and uh, giving her some payment compliments when the share of uh, its cost between the platform and the girl, it's called webcam. Uh, so, uh, uh, according to Dating sites, webcam, uh, it's not legal model, you know, because nudity is illegal in many countries and the dating companies usually a white company and they are working in the legal field and so on. So, talking about the interest of the users that really want to see nude girls and interests of the company that uh, want to be white, want to be legal, where is the compromise in uh, this interest? How to make users? Uh, how do you keep their clothes on? Um, so you know we have ex you know, very strict um, standards. So if we see nudity on and, and we're looking all the time, um, you'll have your account closed right off the bat. So so just just to be clear, so, so there's um, multiple companies kind of per pursuing this that that are not um, kind of in the porn industry. Um, Momo being one in China, um, Live.me being a, a, a big one around the world, in, in, especially in the U.S., Lively uh, being another. Um, so it, it, it is a moderation challenge to ensure that users are not abusing the platform, but um, it, it's being done, and it, it, it's one that you, you have to be up to if you're going to put your app in the App Store. Yes, it is. It is. It's been proven over and over again that it is. Uh, we see only one opportunity to, to make this compromise. It's uh, to make uh, all public broadcasts uh, fully moderatable. Yeah, uh, it will be clear. But to make an opportunity for closed broadcasts for the few uh, few uh, guys and for the one girl. Closed. It can be uh, separated from the public services and it can be shown in the all ours are, are public right now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think for, you know, I mean, that is a good point is a lot of the video-based dating apps, the men are going to come if they see the women and they want them to, to look sexy. And I mean, one of the things that we did is we do moderation as well. We'll remove their account or the videos if we do see nudity. But um, we've kind of introduced different questions that will kind of, Elicit nudity but not have it. So we have one, for example, is uh, show us like your sexiest outfit or your, or your sexy face. And so we can have a lot of times where women are making videos on our app that, you know, could allude to nudity, but it actually isn't nudity. So there are ways around it. I think um, you, can, you can have a little bit of it, but you still, you know, obviously, depending on what country you're in, having the nudity on the app could be an issue. So we don't do live broadcasts, so it's a little bit different. So we have a little bit more moderation than the live broadcast. 
given how many times people have tried video over the last sort of decade, why is it that it's only really sticking now? Has anything changed? I mean, I think the, the big thing is obviously people having access to um, b better connections, cheaper data. Um, you know, a lot of times, um, I mean, what, what we found is, you know, tel you know, television is what everyone went to for video. And I think um, television and apps go, you know, they can, you know, that's how YouTube and Netflix and all these internet-based video are, um, companies are happening. So I think people are kind of seeing that you can, well, most people are watching all their video on a mobile app now. So um, one of the interesting things we're doing is um, we came up with the concept for Showreel and we actually uh, are in advanced talks with MTV and they are, are talking about doing a show about our app um, where a judge panel would actually judge videos based on ours and then rate and put people on dates together. And I think it works so well just because people don't think of video as just being their television set anymore. They think about you know, you see it on Facebook, Instagram, Stories, Snapchat, all of these tools. So I think that's why it's the next progression. And when you see even the emerging markets, uh, Brazil and India, they're getting access to phones that can show video. We're getting better resolution screens on our, on our mobile phones. And, and mainly data is cheaper. So. I mean, I think um, you know, one of the key aspects about really Meet Me, Scout, and Tags is that these, these apps are... Um, they are the most casual you can be inside of dating. So, so, so there's, you know, they're, they're typically not people looking for a date for the next weekend. It's not, it's not really like a Tinder-esque um, model. Um, and I think that's important because the video solution that seems to be working for us is not really aimed at dating the user, right? It's, it's more aimed at kind of socializing with them. There's a lot of dating going on all around the other aspects of the app, but, but the way video seems to be developing is really as an entertainment network more than as a dating network. Um, and it kind of speaks to the fact that, you know, if only two and a half to five percent of your users are going to broadcast, um, you know, obviously not everybody can, can date those, those particular broadcasters. Uh, and the most popular broadcasters will have thousands of viewers, right? And so, so the, the very, very low chance any, anyone watching really believes they're going to date this, this, this user. So they're getting something else. They're, they're, they're not necessarily getting um, a chance of dating them, but they're getting a chance to socialize with them. They're getting a chance to have their questions answered by someone they, they deem you know, interesting. And just from a sociological perspective, um, this is a generation of single who have seen ourselves the most through selfies. And so these are the people who are used to seeing ourselves. So I think just from anecdotally, I think we definitely from interacting with singles across uh, America, people are just more comfortable putting themselves out there. So I definitely see psychologically people are more conditioned for this new wave. Are we developing, developing a new, a new um, generation of voyeurism? And I think Absolutely. I mean, didn't real world just celebrate what, 20, 30? It's, uh, it's not about products, it's about people. And I, I want to pick up on that point because one, one, something I wanted to talk about was you know, the, we've already heard certainly through the, the PR panel around um, influencers. And actually, it's not going to take a huge leap to think that we're going to start getting. The, um, the higher exposure, and I don't mean exposure in that sort of way, but the, the more popular people with the videos that are being displayed being approached by brands to actually do brand placement as part of this. Because if you've got a platform of umpteen million users, actually from an advertiser's perspective, that's quite a good place to be. How, how's industry going to guard against that becoming just another YouTube type effort? Yeah, I mean, we, we did a lot of uh, influencer marketing for our app. Um, I think uh, vi you know, video influencing, influencer marketing could be quite powerful. We, um, I would say 90% of our uh, advertising marketing is all video-based. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, one of the things uh, you struggle with with influencer marketing that's video is, are you just another ad? Are you, you know, is it just, uh, just a bunch of people just promoting a product? And I think uh, the way to make it work is you have to you actually have to make them like the users are actually interested in the app, um, but it can be an issue because a lot of a lot of influencer marketing just looks like a complete ad now. But the problem might be that actually the people that are posting videos yeah. on your platform 
ostensibly to get a, a, a date or, or make a connection, actually end up being someone else's advertiser. Yeah, I mean, we um, mo all the advertising we've done has been through influencers that we've approached, but um, you know, the content that the users generate on ours, we, there is a lot of content that you know could be funny that we could use on like a YouTube ad and things because we ask questions like, "What's your funniest chat up line?" Things like that. So yeah, it does basically become then just more user generated content, you know, similar to like a YouTube platform. I, I would actually see that as an opportunity. So. Um, if you're popular enough where, like r right now, we're like on pace for like 10 million minutes a, a day of video being uh, uh, live. So, so if, if, you're, if you're popular enough where you have certain um, popular broadcasters who brands are paying for influence, um, you know, I think that would be a, a big opportunity for the business. Because you could put, you, you, as the platform owner, you're going to be in a position to know uh, better than... Um, someone else that's kind of just coming into it, who, who, who are the right people to reach out to if you're actually trying to put out message to, um, to reach these influencers. Um, so it, I, I could see that, we're not doing anything on that at the moment, but it, it w I wouldn't be surprised um, to see something like that develop. You know, if you look at something in kind of an adjacent space, Wattpad, uh, you know, that's, a, <laughs> that, that's not, not, not a dating community, but it's a, a reading community. And um, basically people make stories free on it. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, publishers and movie studios kind of come into that, and the the company basically monetizes their content um, to through to these third parties. Is basically saying, look, I can tell you where the talent is, um, so that you can reach them and you know try to create derivative pro products out of their stories. I, I could see something like that, where I could tell you who the influencers are, uh, I could tell you as the audience and when, and I could help you reach them. You could imagine something like that. I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard to say. Do you have any like concerns, or how do you weigh up the investment of going so deep into video and technical broadcasts? So the technical load is, is huge, and the, in terms of like the, the proven, um, actually, like live broadcasts is relatively new coming in. I know loads of people putting a lot behind it, backing it a lot, but you've got companies and like Momo. Running all the last year that they did it, but if you look at you now, it like peaked and then yeah. kind of started to go down a bit. Periscope was down a bit, so those like uh, yeah. kind of terrified me getting into it. Yeah. You've got like full hardware, and so <laughs> how do you kind of like analyze yeah. the risk reward balance for it? So I, I think the way we saw it is, and, and I think you now as a lunch was, is being eaten by live me and lively, right? So so it's it's not that the audience has moved on. It's that they've moved on to somewhere else to do the same thing that they used to do. And um, you now didn't have a couple things going for it. Um, so so, so I, I think there's, I think video will work, at least this model of one-to-many video that, that you're basically talking about, will work if um, you're either number one or number two in a market. Um, that would be like... Um, like an Inky in China, um, maybe a live me in the US, um, or if you're adding video into an existing community where, where there's a reason to be there. And that would be like, frankly, like a, a, a meet me, is, is, that's our intention. That would be like a Facebook or an Instagram. Um, so m my, the way I kind of justify the bet, and it's a big bet on video, um, you know, we have 11 scrum teams in the company, eight of them are working on video. Um, but the way I think you justify the bet is you say um, the, the product's going to seem stale and old in two and a half, three years um, if, if it's essentially every aspect of it isn't video enabled. Um, and so you've got to start somewhere. And, and this somewhere is this one-to-many live video product, maybe eventually few-to-many, maybe eventually one-to-one. -one. Um, I could see it coming into our discuss. We have a kind of a topical community inside the app. Um, I, I could see it coming into many different aspects of the app. And so I don't necessarily view it as you know, an all-in bet on just one concept as much as we've got to start building up this capability and you know, it'll evolve over time as it will. Um, but when you see kind of Facebook and others just in social making huge bets on video, um, it's, it's kind of, I think the writing's on the wall and that's going to be what the future looks like. 
how do you, just thinking of it from a, a customer journey perspective, how do you balance the requirement of being able to display video whilst also trying to provide your users with the service of being able to look at profiles of potential matches? Because I can see actually there could be a challenge there of trying to get that balance between the data heavy download of a, vi of a video, you know, no matter how long or short, compared to the, the relatively flat experience of, of, of reading on a profile. And how do you balance when someone's putting a profile up, wh what pieces of information do you give prominence to? Is it the video that appears at the top? Yeah, I mean, so the way that we did it is um, we kind of went towards the Vine model where you basically scroll through content. Um, I think the difference with ours compared to a live video or just allowing the user to create a one minute video is our videos are quite short. Um, we, each question you answer on ours are, it can be up to five seconds, but when you put it, we basically, what we do is we ask them a series of questions, they record five second answers and we splice it into our show reel. Um, but our, our video profiles are maybe 10, 15 seconds max. So when, you, so when they're onboarded onto the app, they, you know, they put in their basic information, they can upload a photo, and then we get them um, you know, interested in actually creating their video profile. Um, once they've made it and you're wanting to review people, you basically just are scrolling through. Um, because I think the videos are so short, it's, it's not as data intensive. Um, but one of the things that we had an issue with was you know, downloading versus streaming. So when um, we came up with the, the backend that we were using for our, for our app, we went with an AWS backend that used um, mainly a download method. And the reason we did that is we wanted people to have an experience if they didn't have an internet connection. So, you know, we're, we're mainly in London, so if you're on the, you know, on the tube or if you're on a flight and you want to still use the app, we wanted to give them an option. Um, but as we're growing and we're, we're, we're expanding into the U.S. market and Asia and Brazil, we're having to move more to a streaming model. And I think because the videos are short and you do streaming, you, you can still make it work. But I think it's when, you know, it depends on the app because a lot, you're seeing a lot of dating apps that are photo-based dating apps that are now adding video as a new feature in the app, and it's how do you showcase the video on top of the other content that you're showing. I think for us, the difference is that we're mainly only video. So we're able to just make that the key point of how they review a user. Yeah. The issue I, I, we took to mean like, you know, meet me, tag, scout, these are, um, uh, until the launch of video, they're chat apps, right? That's what people are doing. They're, they're chatting in, in, inside of them. They're sending a lot of um, text and photo messages to each other. And will video cannibalize chat, right? Because to your point, when you're watching a video, you're not using the rest of the app, right? Um, and arguably, you're not even going to date the user you're watching. So, so, so just how, how much are you changing the kind of the, the app? Um, We've actually been, and we're not, I'm not going to pretend that we know the mid to long term impact of video given how new it is to us, um, but we, we saw a negligible in, impact on chat, which was, which was very good, because um, I, I think we would have expected to have seen more. Um, but one of the things that we're going to be um, exploring in coming months to try to deal with this problem to the extent it develops or at least uh, maybe find an opportunity is to allow you to uh, minimize the video. Right now, if you're in video, that's what you're doing. And then if you want to go into chat, you know, you have to basically not be in video. Um, we're going to allow you to have um, either uh, one of two ways of doing it. Um, the video will just follow you around the app. So, you know, be minimized, but in, in, a, in a small square. So you could go check your, your messages and do whatever else you're doing and then go back to video. Or within the video experience, just allow you to, to, to just ch uh, access your chats. Um, so that we don't we don't kind of run into that issue of you know seeing cannibalization of the core business from video. And do you think actually there's as tagging technology improves, we'll, we'll get to the point where actually I can start searching by the video content as much as I can by the original profile. So my yeah. my term of reference as a user changes. Right. Yeah. No. Discovery of video hashtags in video. Um, I I actually think a big opportunity that we have not explored um, is that. You know, you have a lot of these live networks becoming essentially entertainment networks. Um, a lot of them are based on a very similar model, but the content tends, tends to be a little bit different depending on the kind of the point of the community. Um, that being said, I, I, I think that live uh, streaming will evolve and become what's perceived as higher quality, and that what will make it seem higher quality will be 
how the, um, the videos are curated. So, you know, you can imagine some product curation that kind of mixes interesting people's viewpoints and, you know, you can imagine like a crossfire sort of TV show where you have talking heads kind of on different sides of issues. You can imagine a dating game where, the, you know, the audience who's viewing thousands of people um, are voting off people, you know, real time. So, so I mean, uh, th that's where I think there's going to be innovation is how, how these streams come together. Sharia, we've covered an awful lot of the, the technology and the commercial piece, but this is a people game. Absolutely. So just as a, I think it's fitting as a final comment from, from, from this session is, how do you think we're going to actually impact our users? Because obviously there's going to be a bunch of us that aren't very confident about producing video, and then we're going to see a bunch of people that are really good at doing it. How's that going to make us feel, and how do we as businesses handle some of that because there's a danger that perhaps we leave some of our customers behind. Yes, well I think it's a huge market opportunity to bring in a segment of the population who's still sort of finding their way in using technology for this very important decision of who might I spend my life with. And so I think also instead of you be selling it as live streaming, the person who sells it as high is virtual speed dating where I can have this live moment and meet with someone and we can see if there's that spark and all those things because I always say online dating, usually there's not the actual dating component that really happens there on the site or the app, but if you can add that component, because my definition of a date is simply two people exploring the possibility of something romantic. So we can have a five course meal, but if you're married, probably not, or we could have this great experience on the app and I feel like I had a real date. So the person who sort of creates that experience, takes in the romance, incorporate it into great tech, really has an opportunity to shift the market and make people feel excited about video. So as, as, as social creatures, um, actually video plays a lot into our, our, our visual requirements as well, so. Absolutely, because even those great photos, I mean in five of my photos, it's a different experience. And I, can, I know how to pose slimmer in a photo, but that real moment is, is very different, and so if you sell it right, it could be very exciting. I'd be, ex I, it's the type of app I'd want to share with the women I know. Like, try this out. You can have a, you know, I feel like you had three dates before tomorrow. I think Michael, Jeff, thank you very much for your insight. It's now time for coffee. Thank you. Thank you.